Welcome to Location, a Loquitur news program delivering top stories from a top newspaper. I'm Alyssa Menser. And I'm Ian O'Neill, and let's take a look at your top stories now. <music> Students across the country are raising awareness to prevent a potential war and genocide in Sudan. On Monday, the Sudan representative from CRS came to talk to a group of students. Let's see what he had to say. We're talking about Sudan now for three principal reasons. The situation is urgent. The consequences for missing this opportunity are immense. And finally, we have an opportunity to make a difference or to shape that outcome. Unlike previous catastrophes, the uh, <laughs> from a top Let's take a look at your top stories. To prevent a war and genocide on Monday. Students across the country to prevent a potential came to the students. Let's either vote in a referendum to uh, declare their own independence or remain part of a larger united Sudan. We have approximately four months to intervene now to move Sudan towards this peaceful transformation. We have less than four months to help the Sudanese people choose life. In the bottom third of the country was ruled by the British and the rest of the country was ruled by the Egyptians. So it has historically been divided between north and south, uh, from historically to colonially, I think to now. Uh, many Sudanese living in the south will tell you there's never been a united Sudan. Um, and this referendum, this opportunity to choose what will be their self-determination, what will be their status next, is for them every bit as significant uh, as the fall of apartheid was for South Africans, uh, every bit as significant as the fall of the colonial powers. For the southern Sudanese, this is not a political process or just a ceasefire agreement. This is their first real chance for freedom to create a country where they feel they are finally recognized in entirety. Their value, their dignity, and, and their, their human rights are upheld. For them, this is their first chance for peace uh, if they can get through this ceasefire. Plans to build a 13-story Muslim mosque near Ground Zero have been the center of controversy recently. The mosque would replace a Burlington Co. factory store that was damaged during the 9-11 attack. People in support of the mosque think it should be built because of religious freedom. Those against the plans think it's too soon to build a mosque so close to Ground Zero. Students at Cambrini have many concerns about the lack of parking on campus. In February, a plan will be proposed to either build a parking garage or a student center. The parking garage would be built over the Dixon Center parking lot and would cost several million dollars. This year, parking has been restricted by the Radnor Fire Chief in some areas of campus due to safety issues. To keep up with current trends, Cabrini's Co-op and Career Services website got a facelift. The new website offers access to social media sites such as Facebook and Twitter and also allows students to instantly apply for internships. The new site features video tutorials that can help students if they have questions. The Think Fast Game Show was held at Cabrini last week. The game show tests participants on random knowledge such as history, sports, music video, pop cultures, world news, and environmental issues. Students were split into teams and had a chance to win up to $200. Labor Day weekend marks the unofficial end of summer. Although Cabrini's classes started well before Labor Day, students took advantage of the three-day break by spending time at the shore, working, and going to barbecues. And now let's hear what the faculty of Cabrini did over this holiday weekend. I'm Megan Conti, live on location, finding out what students did to end their summer over Labor Day weekend. Now let's find out. On Labor Day weekend, I went kayaking on Saturday, went to a Delaware Blue Rocks game on Sunday, it was Zumba Day, and went to a Phillies game on Monday, but they lost the first game. I wasn't there for the second game. 
Over Labor Day weekend, I was down on the Chesapeake Bay with my family and my parents have a boat on the bay, so we went to Cambridge, Maryland, and I was able to spend some time with my two nieces who are five and eight years old, and we got to go swimming and play miniature golf and just spend a lot of quality time together. Uh, on Labor Day weekend, I spent most of the week with, with my girlfriend and we went to both Phillies games on the Monday. So we got to see them uh, win one. Well, they won, they lost the first game and then won the second game. So uh, it was a, it was a pretty eventful weekend, pretty much doing some relaxing and catching up on some rest time that I haven't really had a chance to get uh, over the past few weeks. Well, it sounds like everyone had a fabulous Labor Day weekend. I'm Megan Conti, live on location. Now back to the studio. And now let's check in with Liz for Location's Person of the Week. I'm Liz Scopoletti, and today I have the opportunity to speak with Cabrini's new provost, Dr. Ann Slater. She has been kind enough to dedicate some of her time and answer a few questions that our viewing audience may have. Welcome to Location, Dr. Slater. Thank Thanks you for so having much me, Liz. for joining I'm us. Happy to be here. Thank you. Um, could you tell us what first attracted you to Cabrini? Oh, absolutely. It's, it's a long list, but I'll give you a couple of the top reasons. Uh, I think what really excited me was the Justice Matters curriculum and especially how quickly when Dr. George came to campus and the faculty got together, how quickly that curriculum came together. And I think that that just shows me how, A, committed to the mission the campus is and how quickly they're able to move around something important. And the fact that it had rolled out so quickly, I, I think was a testament to the collaboration and the mission dedication on campus. The second thing really was um, how uh, really excited I was about um, the um, opportunity to help um, move the institution forward, especially with regard to student um, experiences and social justice and um, opportunities to collaborate with partners nearby in Norristown and also around the world. Um, for example, Catholic Relief Services. Um, and probably the third most exciting thing um, was that this is a campus really known for very, very strong undergraduate programs, but also increasingly for wonderful graduate programs. And the ability to help move both undergraduate and graduate programs, work with faculty, um, and to, to provide a really good education for students. Those were those are probably the top three. And then, of course, when I came to mm -hmm. campus and I met students like you, um, I, I thought, this is, this is the place for me. That's lovely to hear. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Now, you have two titles at Cabrini. <laughs> well, two. Two parts of the parts title. Parts of, yes. Right. Provost and mm -hmm. Vice President of Academic Affairs. Now, could right. you explain the difference to our audience? Sure. It's actually not two entirely different jobs, but at every institution, at every college or university, there is an individual who is the chief academic officer. And that person is the vice president for academic affairs, who works with the faculty to ensure educational, uh, the, the, the education enterprise is sound for all students. Um, at some institutions, that person is also the provost. So it's a different title, which often takes into account things outside the classroom and, and areas. For example, as provost, I oversee the Wolfington Center, okay. which is not per se an academic enterprise, but it, it straddles both worlds of curriculum and outside the classroom. So a provost often has other kinds of duties outside of the academic arena, but is has a primary mission of overseeing. So I'm both the provost and the vice president for academic affairs, but it's one job. Oh, okay. Well, thank you for clarifying that. You're welcome. Do you have any plans or ideas for the school year or for the future of Cabrini that you would like to see implemented? Absolutely. Some of the things I really want to work on are expanding experiences for students. Um, I have a, a good deal of, of experience in international education and a good deal of experience in community engagement um, that I think will serve well as I work with the faculty and the staff to provide new opportunities for student experience. Um, I'm really passionate about um, internships and co-op experiences and things like you're doing right now um, with this interview and I would really like to find ways to enable students to take better advantage of those by reducing some obstacles. Well thank you again so much for joining you're us. You're welcome It's been a Liz. pleasure having you. Thank you. Have a wonderful semester. Thank you so much and Thanks. thank you all for tuning in today. Back to you at the news desk. President Obama has a plan to keep the economy moving and upgrade the country's railways, roads, and runways. Also, a government-run bank will be created to fund these projects. The hope is that these projects will stimulate job growth as early as next year. 
A suicide bomber ran a vehicle filled with explosives into a police station in Pakistan. 19 people were killed, including 9 police officers, 8 civilians, and 2 children. 46 others were injured. A school van, a mosque, and a government building were also damaged in the explosion. Pakistanis are trying to deal with the violence and with widespread flooding caused by monsoon rains in July. The U.S. is withholding $26 million that was promised to Mexico. The money won't be delivered because of concerns that Mexico must do more to stop police and military abuse. The money is targeted to fight drug trafficking organizations. And now let's turn it over to Ali Rodolico who's going to talk to us about Philadelphia and Cabrini Sports. Here you go, Ali. Thanks, Anne. Hey guys, Ali Rodolico here reporting this week's sports update on your very own Cabrini Cavaliers and favorite Philadelphia sports. The 2010 fall season kicked off September 1st as men and women's soccer and women's field hockey, volleyball, and tennis set out in hopes of another amazing year. Both women's soccer and tennis opened with wins as women's soccer beat Lawrence University 3-0 and women's tennis beat Richard Stockton College 8-1. Since opening day, both teams have had an amazing undefeated 5-0 start to the season. Women's field hockey lost their home opener against Val on September 14th with a score of 1-0. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the game. The Cabrini women's field hockey team went into Tuesday night's game against Del Val knowing it was going to be a challenging one. Cabrini and Del Val's offense battled back and forth the entire game with strong plays from both sides making it an exciting one for all the fans that came out to support the teams. Here's junior forward Lauren Alessi skillfully taking the ball from a DelVal player and moving it back and forth through DelVal's defenders. Junior forward Mara Gordon collects a pass and turns up the field to create a one-on-one -on -one situation with DelVal's goalie. Cabrini showcased their hard-working defense all night long, but the game-changing play came from a DelVal penalty corner in the first half. Even after the initial save by senior goalkeeper Caitlin Donahue, Del Val was able to still bat the rebound into the goal. However, Cabrini never gave up and fought hard to the final seconds of the game. Field hockey begins its conference games next week starting with Immaculata University on the 21st. In Philadelphia sports news, our fighting Phils have finally made their way back to first place. With one month left until playoffs start, the Phillies finally took the lead in the National League over the Atlanta Braves. Hopefully the Phillies will continue being victorious and take the National League championship for another year. In football news, the Philadelphia Eagles did not have the start that Philly fans were hoping for, and Kevin Cobb's debut as starting quarterback wasn't either. The real hero of the day was second-string quarterback Michael Vick, who went 16 for 24 for 175 yards and one touchdown and had 11 carries for 103 yards. Vic took the Eagles, who were losing 20-3 at one point, and made an exciting game, getting them within only one touchdown. Vic's hard work wasn't enough, though, as the Eagles lost their home opener 27-20 against the Green Bay Packers. The Eagles hope to grab their first win against the Detroit Lions this Sunday. Well, that's all the news I have for today. I'm Allie Rodolico. Tune in next week for all the latest sports updates on Cabrini and Philadelphia sports teams. Thanks, Allie. Now let's check in with Danielle McLaughlin for your entertainment news. Hey guys, MTV's Video Music Awards on September 12th proved to be a night full of surprises. While some people may think the only thing worth watching about the VMAs was the absolutely hilarious Chelsea Handler, others tuned in to watch performances by Eminem, Usher, B.O.B., and Drake. My personal favorite moment of the VMAs was when none other than Lady Gaga asked Cher to, quote, hold my meat purse, unquote. That's right, Lady Gaga wore an outfit made of meat and spared no expense when it came to matching accessories. Should we be surprised? Not at all. If we have learned anything from Lady Gaga, it is to expect the unexpected. Speaking of unexpected surprises, Kanye West performed a song to close the award show. The song he sang had a not-so-tasteful array of adjectives, which leads everyone wondering what sort of train wreck Kanye will produce in next year's award show. Now let's check in with WIBF's Joe and Nick for the album of the week. Hey guys, how's it going? It's your edition here with uh, Nick and Joe 
for album of the week. You know, we got a little special thing coming up here right now. We're doing a little summer review of all the albums that maybe you didn't hear, maybe you loved over the summer. So uh, starting things off. So Joe, uh, great summer for music. You know. Yeah, definitely. Definitely happy with things. So uh, how did it go for you? Uh, I there was definitely some big hits, uh, you know, big hit albums over the summer of 2010. Uh, one of which was uh, Tokyo Police Club's sophomore album Champ. Uh, Tokyo Police Club, indie band from Canada, uh, you know, a small group. They only had one album before this, uh, and it was an incredible success, Elephant Shell. Uh, Champ follows that up really, really nicely. Sort of a mix between, you know, really nice alter alternative indie rock and electronica. Uh, uh, really good feel good album actually and uh, total success in my opinion A yeah, plus great definitely another album that I guess you could say could match that uh, maybe even with popularity coming out is the new Gaslight Anthem coming out they're a New definitely. Jersey uh, native rock band that just got a little popular this is also their third album American Slime that just came out this summer but they just you know gained their big popularity opening up with Bruce Springsteen this summer and uh, they got the good you know a little bit of indie more or less rock and just you know just good riff rock um, band coming out of New Jersey and just I'm happy to see actually gain their popularity with this album American Slam that just came out this summer. Yeah, so. their, their last album was fantastic and mm -hmm. I've been listening to their new stuff it's really good. Mm -hmm. uh, the second album I want to hit is uh, actually a soundtrack and it's the official soundtrack to Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Uh, for those unfamiliar, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World is a new Edgar Wright movie based on the uh, Brian Lee O'Malley uh, graphic novel series starring uh, Michael Cera and a slew of others. Uh, it's actually a fantastic movie, and the soundtrack features Beck, Metric, a slew of others, and it's one of the best soundtracks I've ever heard, uh, especially given the whole indie indie movie genre. Uh, it's got some really solid music on there. Um, Sex Bob -omb, I, I really wish it was a great band, and, and an actual band, um, because Beck did some great work on it. Yeah, definitely. An album that I just want to bring up was uh, the Jack Johnson To The Sea album, his latest album that just came up in a huge tour that he followed with. Uh, he followed Nationwide and it also did the Kakoa Fest that he's also known for headlining every year over in Hawaii. Um, the album was great. It is another you know, rendition of Jack Johnson with all his fellow bandmates playing with uh, Zach Gill from American Animal, uh, Animal Orchestra Liberation, ALO, um, coming out. It was a great album. They also have Ben Harper and G Love, G Love coming in on the album as well, compilations. And uh, just a great album all together. Definitely some great stuff from Jack. All right, next week I'll be bringing you a very special episode of Album of the Week dedicated to Arcade Fire's third album, The Suburbs. It's one of the albums that we didn't get to hit today, but it's such a fantastic, intricate album that we decided that it needs its own standalone episode. So I'll be bringing that to you next week. Uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching Album of the Week here on Location. I'm Joe Cahill. And I'm Nick Benani. Thanks for hanging out, guys. And now back to Danielle with more entertainment news on Location. Well, that's all I have for you this week. Tune in next week for more entertainment news. I'm Danielle McLaughlin. Back to you at the news desk. Thanks, Danielle. And thank you for watching Location, the Local News program. I'm Ian O'Neill. And I'm Alyssa Menser. And be sure to check us out online at thelocator.com or on iTunes. I'm Ian O'Neill, and on behalf of all of us here at Location, I hope you had great news this week.